I'm Bill Vensel, otherwise known as Chords of Orion, and I am pleased and honored to be here to conduct a masterclass on the topic of Frippertronics. So let's get right down to it. From almost the time it was invented, audio recording tape has been used for all types of musical experiments. I think of the 40s into the 50s with Les Paul and Mary Ford using kind of wacky tape loop delay effects with their rock and roll music. I think of Jimi Hendrix back in the 60s using tape decks with tape, obviously, to create really cool flanging effects. I also think of the Beatles, the White Album, Revolution number nine, number nine, number nine, in which they used lots and lots of tape loops to create a very experimental piece. As we get into the mid-70s, two musicians appear that are relevant to the topic of Frippertronics. The first is Brian Eno, a record producer and ambient musician. He created some watershed, very watershed, groundbreaking, very important albums, such as Music for Airports. He also did a series of collaborations with musician number two, and that is Robert Fripp, who was the founder of the prog rock group King Crimson, and who was and still is a very influential experimental guitarist. Well, in the course of the collaborations that he did with Brian Eno, Robert Fripp came up with an interesting gear setup. He used two Revox reel-to-reel -reel tape decks set side by side. And what he would do is take his audio, his guitar tone, and run part of that audio into tape deck number one, where he would put it into record mode, right? So he's recording on tape deck number one. He then took the tape and stretched it all the way over to tape deck number two, where he would actually play back, immediately play back what he had just recorded. Now, as you can imagine, this is creating a tape path several, potentially several feet long, and it introduced delay into the audio recording. Really cool. So Robert Fripp was able to get eh, three to six seconds or so of delay time. He would also make use of a mixer so he could bring the audio back in, feed it back into either one or the other tape decks to create decay repeats, different types of loops, and looping layers. So how do we make use of our modern digital equipment to do Frippertronics. Well, the core effect you're going to need is a delay pedal. Now, I've got the Strymon Timeline here, but it doesn't have to be the Strymon Timeline. Actually, if you do have a good quality delay pedal, there's a good chance that you can probably do Frippertronics, as long as the delay pedal has the capability of longer delay times. I think a minimum of three to four seconds is a really good place to be if you've got a delay pedal that can do that. Now, you can do Frippertronics with shorter delay times. I wouldn't go any shorter than two seconds, but if you do have a delay pedal that can do a two second delay, you can at least get started with Frippertronics um, experiments and kind of get a feel for how it works, and then decide if you want to move into a pedal with a longer delay time. All right, let's see what I've got going on on the floor on the pedal board. First up is a compressor, that's the Strymon Compadre, and that's running into my distortion pedal, the Strymon Sunset. From there, I'm heading into an amp modeler, and in my case, that's the Strymon Iridium. If you're using a traditional guitar amp, then obviously you're not going to need that. From my amp modeler, I'm heading into a volume pedal. I'm using an old school Morley Little Alligator, and that's heading on into the all important delay pedal, the TC Electronic Flashback Triple Delay. Now again, you don't need any of these specific pieces of gear. Use what you have, use the brands that you like, okay? It's all good. Um, the triple delay is going to be useful today for me to show you different examples. That's why I'm using it right now. Let's just take a quick listen to my distorted tone that we'll be uh, kind of checking out as we go through these exercises. <laughs> Okay, 
It's a pretty simple tone. I actually have the tone control on the guitar rolled all the way down to kind of take the some of that fizz and fuzziness out of the uh, distorted tone. All right, let's get into the first Frippertronics delay type. And so that's delay number two on the triple delay. I've got a tape style delay pulled up for this particular example. If you don't have tape style delays on your delay pedal, no worries. Just select whatever kind of delay you like and then set it to a nice long delay setting. I've got this set all the way down to seven seconds. So let's check out what I have going on there. Uh, oh, there we go. It's kind of a long delay, isn't it? I mean, it really is a seven second delay. So, Think about that. With a seven second delay, or even a four second delay, what I want you to do is stop thinking about your delay pedal as being an echo pedal. Think about it as being a miniature looper. So a looper that can do three or four second loops, or five or six or seven second loops, okay? If you get that in your head, it's really gonna help you out. So let's go ahead and create some five, six, seven second loops around E, just the pitch E I'll be playing in some different octaves. So here we go, let's check this out. Of cool isn't it so even with just playing one note you can you can kind of hear some of the possibilities now if we be, begin to expand out into some different notes ah then we're going to get into some really interesting um, capabilities some interesting looping textures so i'm going to stay focused around e so let's th say an e minor chord so EGB, right? And I might throw a D in there, the uh, flat seven of the E minor scale. And let's see what we get. I'm going to start on a, a D. Here we go. a lot better than just yeah that's a lot more interesting isn't it and as you probably heard as I played on I naturally started falling into the rhythm of the delay interval so I kind of started thinking it's for me it's kind of unconscious I just kind of get into the rhythm of the delays so the layers are coming in a roughly rhythmic fashion with however long the delay is. So I, that's pretty common for different types of Frippertronic pieces. So when we play Frippertronics, are we stuck with just one chord? The answer is no, we're not. So in the first example I wanna show you, I'm gonna be focused on a D major kind of chord. And then I'm going to move into a G major situation, okay? And the way I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna focus on the common note between a G major chord and a D major chord. You guys know what that is, right? It's the D itself, right? So 
Let me go ahead and start. I'm going to start with a lower D, come up with an F sharp, and I'm going to throw in the ninth of a D major also, which would be an E, just, just for grins. I like the sound. Uh, you also may have noticed that I'm using a volume pedal. I like to use a volume pedal with Frippertronics just to control the envelope of the tone. It is not required. Uh, as a matter of fact, if you go through Robert Fripp's catalog of Frippertronics pieces, you'll hear him not use a volume pedal or any other type of envelope controlling device a lot of times. A lot of times he's just playing out and out, you know, distorted guitar. But I'm using a volume pedal. Practice with and without, see what you prefer, or if you like to use them both. Okay, here we go. I'm going to start with D major and try and get myself around to a G major without it sounding too bad. Here we go. Now I want to try to transition to G, so I'm going to go hang out on D. We're going to head up to a higher G now. Now I can hit that low G. Now I can get the B in there for the G major. I can even hit an F sharp, right? That's the seventh. Now I'm gonna hang out on a D again. A little bit of an A. All right. So it is possible to change chords while you're playing Frippertronics. You do have to be careful though. You gotta remember that you've got these loops, these layers of sounds that are just playing out and they're repeating, right? They're gonna go away eventually as they decay out. But if you make a mistake, yeah, it's kind of all over. So a little bit of practice with this technique and knowing how you can move from one chord to another is a really good thing. So let's spice this up a little bit with uh, some other delays. So we've, we've got the basics down. We know we can play and hang out on one chord. We know we can switch chords. And now we'll learn that we can enhance the sound with other delays. So if you happen to have a second delay pedal, or if you have a delay pedal like the triple delay where you have multiple delay lines, go ahead and set up a short delay to sound out in front of your long Frippertronics delay. So my long Frippertronics delay is on delay line number two. On delay line number one, I've set up a short ping pong delay. Hope you're listening on headphones or stereo speakers because that ping pong delay is pinging and ponging between the right and the left. All right, so now if we add that longer delay in after the short ping pong or slap back, if you prefer slap back, check this out.
Oh, yeah. That sounds really nice. I mean, I like the sound of just the tape style delay by itself. But with that little short ping pong or slap back delay in front, it just adds a lot of depth to the sound. Now, you're not limited to just using delay pedals with a Frippertronic setup. You can use whatever you wish. You could throw choruses or other modulation devices in there. You could throw a reverb in there. That would sound really good. Set it up to a hall or a room reverb or, man, maybe even a little bit of shimmer for that fairy dust on top. Oh, yeah. In my case, I don't have a reverb pedal, but I do have a third delay line. Whoops. And I've got this set up to a modulating digital delay. Here's what it sounds like with a clean guitar tone. Yeah, again, you can hear it kind of pinging and ponging back and forth. And if I switch back over then to my lead tone. Uh, it's not a reverb, but it kind of gives you that ambience kind of thing that reverbs give you. If I throw in my ping pong on top of that, you know, ping pong into the modulating digital delay, I get this. Yeah, that's nice. Now, if I throw in my Frippertronics delay in the middle, right, so I've got ping pong, long Frippertronics delay, and then my modulating digital delay, here's what I get. I really like that a lot because it just gives me a lot of depth and width to the sound, but I'm still also hearing those lovely layers, those lovely loops that are coming from the Frippertronics style delay. All right, now that I've got a full sound with my three delay lines, I want to go back to a chord switching exercise again. I'm going to start on D major again. We'll head on to G major, but then I'm going to keep going. We're going to head down to E minor, and then we're going to head to C major, then we're going to head to A minor, and then we're going to try to head back to D. We'll see how we do with this. Again, this is just an exercise to think about how these different loop layers play with each other or play against each other as you're switching chords. Here we go. D major. G went pretty well. Now we're going to head down to E minor. We're going to go to C. Add nine. 
I'm going to use the E to help transition me to the A minor chord. And also a C. Now the A. to focus on the A to try and get me back to D major. We'll see how it goes. Yes. Okay. So I actually, I was able to do that. That's cool. But with a little bit of practice, you'll be able to do that too. Again, the key is as you're thinking about this, the cycle of chords that you want to move through in the piece, think about notes that are common between the chords that you're playing and then use them as the transition points as you're switching chords. So far, we've kind of stayed chord based, right? We're not playing, you know, chords like this. We're, we're not playing chords like that. We're playing arpeggios in essence, right? Right, Really long running arpeggios. But you can also play, as you heard me a little bit do, you can play more lead related things with Frippertronics and make it work pretty well. So let me give you a couple of examples. I'm gonna hang out again in E minor. But I'm going to be a little more lead focused as I play. Here we go. You may have noticed I didn't use the volume pedal very much on that sequence, right? So just picking away. Now, what I did do that was different perhaps than a lot of lead playing is I left a lot of intervals in between the notes. Now I do that for a few reasons. One is I just like the sound of it and that, that shows some of the influence that Robert Fripp has had on my playing because a lot of times he'll use large intervals in his lead playing. But there is also an even more practical reason, and that is as you're playing these long kind of delay loops, um, it's nice to have intervals so that as the loops kind of blend together, they sound really nice. And, you know, they kind of sound like chords, even though you're not thinking as chordally. Now, if I play more of a regular line, you know, maybe I'll play like that, right? Yeah, it's not as not as great, is it? I mean, I'd rather hear somebody just, you know, sweet picking or you know, playing a really sweet lead with maybe just a little light delay and not trying to do a Frippertronics thing, right? So 
thinking about those longer intervals it can or larger intervals can be a really good thing space in between the notes. All right, are we stuck with just distorted lead tones? Well, of course not. Uh, Frippertronics can work really well with clean guitar tones too. So I've turned off the distortion and I'm just gonna play some clean sounds and uh, let's see what we get. That's really nice. You can even kind of mix it up and switch between a lead tone and the clean tone. You may even decide to use something else besides a guitar pick. For example, something like an Ebo. Maybe you've got an Ebo or another kind of sustaining device. That works great with Frippertronics too. <laughs> 